Hey, what's up guys? Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. Hope you guys are doing fantastic. I've got a really awesome episode for you guys today. We're going to be talking about one of the easiest Kubernetes distributions that you can spin up in your home lab. And not only an easy Kubernetes distribution, but also easy Kubernetes storage. If you're ready to dive into Kubernetes storage for the home lab environment, as well as learning skills for production, stick around. A lot of times ones get into learning Kubernetes and you quickly find that the persistent storage aspect of Kubernetes is often the most challenging. We're going to take a look at MicroKates, which is an excellent version of Kubernetes for beginners all the way to production environments. And it's super easy to install and configure. But not only that, we're going to take a look at a storage solution known as MicroCeph. MicroCeph is a specialized storage integration that allows you to have easy storage within MicroKates. All we have to do to tie MicroCeph with MicroKates is enable the Rook Ceph plugin. So step one is installing MicroKates. Let's see how that's done. This is an Ubuntu 2204 LTS server that I have patched. And the simple way to install MicroKates is this one line command. Snap install MicroKates. We're going to point it to the stable channel of 1.28 and you need to pass this classic flag. So once we have that, we're just going to hit enter. Okay, so the command completed successfully. We can check the status of our MicroKates cluster with the MicroKates status dash dash wait dash ready command. It says MicroKates is running. Now we need to repeat the process to install MicroKates on our additional nodes. We're just simply going to paste the same command in to nodes two and three. Getting microcates installed on both the other nodes. Now that we have microcates installed on all three nodes, we want to add our additional nodes to the cluster that we have established on kube one. So to do that, we're going to use the command microcates add dash node it will display the join command along with the join token that we can use to add our additional nodes to the microcates cluster so i'm going to issue this command on node 2 to add our third node we need to also issue the command add node again to to have a unique token so let's go to node 3 we're going to issue the join command to check on node 2 and it looks like it has finished joining the cluster. Node three, still working on that process. And there you go. So node three has also joined the cluster. So now what we can do is we can issue the command microcates kubectl get nodes. So now we've got all three cluster nodes joined to the cluster. And we can see we're running version 1.28. So the next step is installing MicroCeph. Let's walk through that. The first step that we need to accomplish is actually getting MicroCeph installed on all three nodes. So to do that, I'm going to issue this command, uh, sudo snap install MicroCeph. We're telling it which channel, which is the latest channel, and we're just simply going to hit enter. Pop over to node two, I want to install it there as well, node three. So if we look at all three of our nodes, they have all installed MicroCeph successfully. So we see that completed message on all three. And on node one, we're actually going to bootstrap the MicroCeph cluster configuration. And that's a simple command, MicroCeph cluster bootstrap. This establishes the MicroCeph cluster and then similar to MicroKates, 
we're going to join the other two nodes to our Microsoft cluster. As you can see, the Microsoft cluster bootstrap command has completed successfully. In order to join our other nodes to the Microsoft cluster, what we're going to do is issue the Microsoft cluster add command, and we're going to pass in the names of the other two Microsoft cluster nodes. So I'm going to issue the command Microsoft cluster add kube2, and then also kube3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the join token. I'm going to head over to node 2, and we're going to issue the command Microsoft cluster join. And we're going to paste the join token. And now I'm going to hop back over to node one and we're going to copy the join token for node three. And we're going to issue the same command cluster join. As we can see, kube two and kube three have both joined the Ceph cluster. Now we can hop back over to node one and we can enter the command Ceph status. And what this will tell us is it will show us that we have three daemons. We've got our quorum, which is kube one, kube two, and kube three. Now, as you notice, we've got a health status of health underscore one. Now, that is because we've not added our OSDs, which is the next step. Now that we have Microsoft installed, the next step for adding our storage to the Kubernetes cluster is allocating disks that are going to be used for our Ceph storage. Now, I have virtual machines that are acting as my MicroKate's Kubernetes nodes. So all I'm doing in VMware vSphere, and this applies to any other hypervisor, is I'm simply adding an additional disk to those vSphere virtual machines. After I've added the disk to the virtual machines, then we can allocate those disks as the disk that will back the storage pool for our Microsoft storage cluster. So I have added the virtual disks to all three of my Kubernetes nodes on the VMware virtual machine side of things. So we can confirm that we indeed do see the additional disk by entering the command lsblk. And as you can see, we've got an SDB that is appearing and that is the 20 gig disk that I added to the virtual machine. So we can look at the other nodes. We've got the SDB on node three. And then also node two, we've got SDB, 20 gig disk. Now we're going to run a special command to wipe this disk and add it to our Ceph storage pool. So that is Microsoft disk add. We're passing in the disk, as we can see, SDB, and we're giving it the parameter to wipe. And we're going to do this on all three nodes. As you can see, the command completed successfully on node one node two, and node three. Now, if we hop back over to node one and we enter the command Ceph status, we will see that the health has now changed from health underscore worn, as we remember seeing earlier, to health underscore okay. And as we can see, we correctly now have three OSDs displaying in our Ceph configuration. So we have installed MicroKates, we've installed MicroCeph, and we've added disk to MicroCeph. So now what we have to do is marry the two together. And that is easily done in MicroKates by simply enabling the Rook Ceph plugin. And then we'll run a command to pull in that MicroCeph storage that we have created so that MicroKates can use that storage for persistent volume storage. Okay, guys, now this step to enable Rook Ceph in MicroKates, and that is a simple command, MicroKates enable Rook dash Ceph. So let's run this command. And after running the command on node one, as we can see, it directs us to run the command MicroKates connect external Ceph. And that's going to tell MicroKates that we already have a Ceph storage pool that we would like to connect to. So I'm going to run this command next, microcates connect external Ceph. And after running the command, we can see that it enables the Rook Ceph plugin, it creates the pool, 
And then at the bottom, it displays the default storage provider, which as we can see below, it is Ceph-RDB. And then along with that, we can see the reclaim policy, the volume binding mode, and other details. So all of this looks really good. Now we can start to have fun. We can now create a workload or AKA a pod in our microcates cluster that allocates a persistent volume claim on that persistent storage. In other words, it allocates storage from that persistent volume pool. So let's create a pod that takes advantage of this persistent storage. So I'm going to simply just create a pod.yaml file. And we're going to paste in our configuration that as you can see, it's going to just create a simple Nginx pod that is telling it that we want to use the storage class name Ceph-RDB, which we remember that from the output as being our default storage provider. And we're telling it we want to have a persistent volume claim of five gigs of storage. So just scrolling on down, we're just simply doing a bit of basic configuration for the Nginx pod. I'm just going to save this as pod.yaml. And then now we're going to issue the command microcates kube ctl create dash f pod.yaml. And this will pass in the configuration from the pod.yaml file and actually create our Nginx pod with the persistent volume claim. And as we can see, we have a success and we've got a persistent volume claim Nginx PVC. We can also see that if we do microcates kube ctl get PVC. And as we see, we've got Nginx dash PVC bound, and we can see our persistent volume claim, the capacity access mode, and so forth. Awesome. Well, guys, this has been extremely fun to play around not only with Kubernetes, but also to allocate persistent storage in Kubernetes. And honestly, using technologies like MicroCates and MicroCeph, it makes spinning up a Kubernetes cluster and persistent storage for that Kubernetes cluster, a non-event. And who would have said that a few years ago? So I hope you've really enjoyed seeing this process, how easy it is, maybe getting introduced to these two technologies, and hopefully it gives you some ideas to play around with in the home lab. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel. We've got a lot more great content lined up and I hope you guys are doing well out there. Keep safe, keep on home labbing, and I will see you guys on the next video.